studies have shown that body odor in Homo sapiens is not just displeasing. It is categorically more pungent than comparable animals. And our sweat contains more noxious chemicals than other mammals and birds. The result is the unreasonable unpleasantness of human body odor, which is in direct contradiction to our daily evolutionary need to fit in, attract a mate, and not do so much laundry. This leads us to an obvious question. Why do we smell so bad? Or, more precisely, why does human body odor have an exceptionally repugnant smell? Let's dispatch with a few common misconceptions. First, many seem to believe that it acts as some kind of an insect repellent. But, in fact, uh, it attracts many insects. So much so, this is true, uh, Synthetic body odor is used to help trap malaria-carrying mosquitoes. That little blue vial on the right is three patents worth of genuine synthetic human stank. <laughs> Second, uh, the famous t-shirt study seems to suggest that sweat contains pheromones that your potential partners might find arousing. However, plenty of species have pheromones that are not disgusting. <laughs> Flowers, for instance, attract bees by smelling nice. It makes no particular sense that we would use a reverse psychology pheromone that tricks our mates into loving us with a disarmingly disgusting aroma. <laughs> so, what is the solution? We ran a series of qualitative and quantitative studies to try to generate a hypothesis. We asked participants to sniff a nondescript black bag and describe what they smelled. Pleasant smells were often described as delicious, whereas the bag containing unwashed work and gym clothes were usually described as gross, disgusting, and other terms that strongly implied they would be unpleasant to eat. <laughs> this led us to an obvious hypothesis. Human body odor... <laughs> I found it convincing as well. Human body odor evolved as protection against being eaten by other people, also known as cannibalism. <laughs> to bolster our hypothesis, we combed the anthropological records. Uh, and we came to several supporting hypo uh, conclusions. Consistent bathing in society and its removal of body odor is strongly correlated with the stabilization of diet. This suggests that body odor loses its evolutionary benefit uh, when people are well-fed and less likely to partake in cannibalism. <laughs> Moreover, extreme body odor in Homo sapiens arose at the same time as persistence hunting, the act of chasing one's prey until it is too tired to run away. Such actions are, uh, in, su in such hunting techniques, there is a strong benefit to change one's prey from the gazelle to the weakest hunter that may also be too tired to run away. <laughs> While we found our pre-study and the anthropological evidence quite convincing, uh, the true test of any scientific theory is in what it can describe and predict. Documented cases of cannibalism occur almost exclusively in situations where there is extreme work for scarce food resources, along with what we call accidental bathing, <laughs> or acts in which the body is unintentionally cleansed of its odor due to environmental circumstances. For instance, the Great European Famine had unusually wet weather conditions. <laughs> the so-called cannibal islands had fishing via submersion into water, and even the Donner Party had consistent contact from the snow onto the skin. Still, you may be thinking, many groups undergo accidental bathing without eating each other. Is there a way to predict which ones will take the plunge? We applied machine learning to the question. <laughs> Using principal component analysis, along with a logistic regression, we ran a deep neural net and found a strong inflection point predicting when a society tends to become cannibalistic. More specifically, 0 0.1337 meals squared per bath food exertion hour. We call this number the cannibal constant. 
Groups that fall below the cannibal constant are at extreme risk of intraspecies predation. For instance, the Argentinian soccer team, featured in the movie Alive, was at a fairly consistent 0.0874 meals squared per bath food exertion hour. And so it's only natural that they would succumb to cannibalistic behavior. Finally, looking forward, we believe there are numerous avenues for future research as well as industry applications for our work. It is currently unknown if those with less body odor are protected by the herd immunity of communal odor. <laughs> the answer to this question is of particular importance to our NASA grant application, <laughs> where we hope to better plan for human missions to Mars. And finally, we'd like to know if human body odor can be used in diet programs to help detour eating. And might cities, like Seattle, require mandatory odors on unhealthy foods? <laughs> in these ways, we might reap some benefit from the seemingly unjust just plight of our own smell. Or, to quote Hamlet, there is nothing good or bad in this world but stinking makes it so. <laughs> Thank you.